Hello and welcome to another episode of the TNA Retro Impact Podcast, whatever we want to call it, because we still haven't come up for a name of it. But today is August the 5th, 2005, 15 years back. And technically, I am 10 years old at this point, but I'm not 25, unfortunately. Joined with me for this section of the shows, it's McIver or Dan. Hi. Before we do get into the show itself, obviously we've got to get uh, the nitty gritty out of the way first. First thing, go and download Impact Plus. Uh, they are It's a fantastic service. It's so good. Um, they've got so many pay-per-views and they are literally like, to compare it to WWE Network, the Raw from like last night will go on in a month's time. Impact from tonight, as we're recording this, but technically last night, is already on there. Like They put it on the day after. It is top notch top class definitely do go and subscribe to it and it's relatively cheap as well i think it's seven pound a month which that is good compared to some other ones you do get out there also go over to we love sport uh, download the app on the app store uh, and google play store follow them on twitter at we love sport uk head over to the website we love sport.co they are a fantastic app and company itself that shows you 300 bars and pubs in the UK. Now that lockdown's coming to an ease, we may see something happen. I doubt it. But you'll be able to go and watch some sport, football, cricket, tennis, rugby, and of course, wrestling. Uh, And they've got, it's all at your fingertips, all on your phone, and it is lovely stuff. And they are just some some lovely people over at that company. And also, speaking of lovely companies. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. Go on, you take this one. Okay. Um, go, Go out and buy stuff from 13tenapparel.com. Um, unfortunately, you've missed the window. They had a massive sale on this window, um, uh, this weekend. It was, it was incredible. All, everything was slashed, slashed in price. Really, really good quality stuff, slashed in price. In addition to discounts, which may come in the future, sorry to tell you, but may come in the future, um, we have a code, TWM25. Go to 13tenapparel.bigcartel.com, um, apply TWM25, 25 and you get 25 percent off and they've got everything t-shirts hoodies Caps, jackets suits, jackets shorts shorts how many wrestling apparel places have shorts none of them really i don't actually think any well, of them Schad- well schadenfreude but like they're different i, I unfortunately can't I, show I, full I, of did a hoodie, I copped a hoodie 13 10 apparel dot big cartel dot com i can't show off my merch at checkout I can't show off all my merch. My t-shirt's in my wardrobe somewhere. My hat's on the top of my wardrobe. And my two two jackets are in my car, which is at the garage being fixed. So, unfortunately, can't show you. But let's roll straight into the show of uh, TNA Retro Impact, August the 5th, 2005. And we do start off with some X, Cup, X Division action. And it's the Super X semifinals. Samoa Joe versus Alex Shelley. This is a masterclass in wrestling because everyone forgets how good Alex Shelley is at the grounded submission and technical side of wrestling. He's class. He's so good. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't really know that much about Alex Shelley. And um, hearing them describe him as um, a mat technician really confused me because the little I do know of Alex Shelley is flippy. Yeah. He can do so both. I was, it I was very, very, very interested by that. I was like... Oh, well, I know what match this is going to be. But, like, no, it was um, Samoa Joe, uh, like, was the two of them grappling and Samoa Joe slowly but surely overpowering him. And can I just say, Samoa Joe had it back then. From the start. From the start. He had it. He had it. I think he figured it out before John Cena, which is crazy if you think about it. Yeah, Joe is a complete package. Uh, we did have um, P.T. Williams was stood at the top of the rampway and AJ Styles was watching on a monitor backstage. They are the other two members of the uh, semi-finals. So the winner of their match goes on to face the winner of this match was Samoa Joe. Uh, at this point in his career as well, it obviously got later on, Samoa Joe would hit a muscle bar start and that was it. Like, that was, we knew he was going to win from that point on. Yeah. He did now, he hits a muscle bar start and still locks in a Kikina clutch. Um. Yeah, like it's, it's absolutely methodical and oh, just disgusting. I love it. I love it. And I also love the commentary putting over the fact that Samojo can talk. He's actually very eloquent. He just is not talking yeah. on camera. 
because all he wants to do is kill people. That is a gimmick. It is a gimmick. It is a gimmick and a half. Um, but yeah, so Joe advances to the Super X finals, which does happen at Sacrifice, and he'll face either Peter Williams. Sacrifice! Or... I'm, I'm, sure you're, I'm sure you're glad you invited me on. I am. What are you talking about, McIver? I don't know what you're on about. We do get a, an interview backstage with Cassidy Riley, who I think against Raven's will is sort of just shoehorned him into like being buddies with him because Cassidy Riley got saved by, by Raven a while ago against the Bits and then he tried to return the favour. And yeah, Cassidy Riley is just a bit delusional, but it's it's hilarious. It is lovely to see. It's just um oh Yeah, it's just we've definitely seen this kind of relationship before in wrestling. Yeah. Well, all like more recently in wrestling, I guess, is what we go with, you know. Well, I mean, bro- bros away straight away. Cassidy like, is is really no, not, not quite bros away. I'd actually say um, bros are mates. Oh yeah, million Pete. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bros are mates springs to mind. Eugene and Lit- Any, everyone Lincoln springs to mind. You know, like. You know that wrestler who, uh, that young wrestler who idolizes the older wrestler. Like the beginning of to keep it impact. The beginning of um, Black Machismo. Jay yeah. Lethal. His entire run. The beginning of the Jay Lethal Ric Flair thing starts with Ric Flair rejecting Jay Lethal for going. Oh my God, you're my hero. Yeah. Yeah. Raven doesn't reject him. Raven sort of welcomes, kind of welcomes him in. But yeah, he has a, a backstage segment. Uh, we do move back into the ring for a tag team match, and that is the Naturals, a team that both myself, Reese, and Rakaiva have all said we've forgotten about because I the TNA do tag not titles. Know who these people are? Jimmy Hart is their manager. That's all you need to know. They are the TNA tag team champions, and they have barely defended the titles since we started this podcast. They haven't even. No, they haven't defended them at all. My favourite thing is their competitors. It seems that their competitors are basically the spine of TNA going forward. Mm. Eric Young, Bobby Roode, the captains, Petey Williams, <laughs> and I'm sure A1 changed his name and did something in Impact. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think I don't know about A1, but yeah, um, obviously we're they're going up against Team Canada, um, who at this point were just they were just dominant, but. They did an Eddie Guerrero. It was so good. Mm. Uh, I think it was an, a, I think it was a fake leg. It wasn't a fake leg. It was. Oh, a, was it a hockey stick? No, it was Jimmy Hart's microphone. Megaphone. That was it. I knew it was something weird, weird shaped. Um, the radicals threw it at um, uh, Team Canada. Obviously, lays on the Bobby floor. Reed, doesn't Eddie Guerrero? Bob, Bobby Roode grabs it. The naturals go down. It's thrown out, and Bobby Roode actually uses um, it to lamp him. Yeah. Like, you know, he was just like, well, if I've been DQ'd, nothing's stopping me now. <laughs> yeah, so Naturals win by disqualification, but they, the, the, well, Team Canada get the last laugh, um, but they do have a little saviour, the Naturals, and that is America's Most Wanted, who come down and um, and make a save. Despite the fact that Naturals and America's Most Wanted relationships have been very, very weird, um, they Rocky. seem to kind of... So, uh, yeah, they have their back. They have they have each other's back. Uh, we do get a. I've lost my notes. Where am I? I want this one. Uh, we get another match between Abyss and Apollo or Grand Apollo is his name. I think I've only ever called him Apollo. Abyss at this point is obviously just a, a machine. So I was going to say, like, I've just watched um, Apollo get destroyed by an absolute monster. What year is it? Two thousand and five. No, it's not. It's oh, two thousand twenty. <laughs> I like that. That was good. I will say this, though. I will always say this about Abyss. Despite the fact he is such a big competitor, he bumps like hell for his opponents. He always makes his opponents look so, so good. He's Kane rather than Undertaker. Yeah, he is. uh, Apollo got a lot of offense in here. um, Did did look strong, but Abyss, yeah. Abyss Abyss comes out out on top because Apollo is about to win, and then James Mitchell's obviously on the outside. He distracts the referee. Black Hole Slam. One, two, three. That's it. But straight after the match, Lance Hoyt comes down. Lance Hoyt! As, as long as, as we know him. Now, Fulham fan, Lance Archer, as I saw on his Instagram earlier today. You, uh, you, you didn't get that at all, did you? I, I did, but I just sort of ignored it. Oh, man. So, Why? I don't know. 
I like no selling your jokes. It's fun. Uh, yeah, but like, come on, Arrested Development's great. Yeah, I, yeah. I've actually never. I haven't seen that much. Of, I haven't seen that much of Arrested Development. I've only seen bits and pieces, but I do know. I do know that reference. Yeah. Well, there we are. <laughs> um, yeah, lots of it comes down. Attacks a bitch from behind and. Lots of <laughs> And challenges him to a match at Sacrifice, which Abyss does accept. Um, so just over a week and a half away from today, we will be talking about that. We're talking about Abyss versus uh, Lance, Hoyt, and many other matches on that card. We get another backstage segment. Uh, it's a really weird segment. It's a conversation between Monty Brown and Monty Larry... Brown, the man Larry is the here. Boy. The reason, the reason I agreed to do this is here. Monty, Gra- welcome to the motherfucking Serengeti. That's going to get us demonetized, isn't it? Oh, well. Um, he's having a conversation with Larry Zabisco in what looks like some bleachers in an American school. It looks something really like it's just a metal structure and they're still stood inside it. Um, and they're both wearing incredible shirts. Their, their shirts are fantastic. It's 2005. The fashion is beautiful. Um, and yeah, they're just speaking about what's going forward. What, what, what's happening with, obviously, Monty Brown and, and his um, feud with three live crew. And at this point, Larry Zabisco was, was the man in charge. But we do get to our main event. Raven and Sabu teaming up to take on Simon Diamond and David Young. The two, they are just, they just get the shit ripped out of them constantly by uh, commentary. They just rip the shit out of them. That's all they do. <laughs> Honestly, all, all Don West and, 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 and Mike Tanay do is just mug them off. It is so funny. But yeah, so uh, Simon Diamond's gimmick is he's like, it's like a, an original version of Seth Rollins' current Messiah gimmick. Like he's like, I'm a pro, I'm a 16 year pro, like, I'm the best, people will come to me and learn. And that obviously get, Rollins' gimmick is he's the Messiah, he saves people and that sort of stuff. And it's a very similar sort of thing to that. It's just a narcissist. Madis- no, so it's Madison Rain in current TNA. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. But, but the difference is, is that Simon Diamond's a crap wrestler. Hmm. Uh, that, that's that's what it is. What I don't understand in this match is Sabu wins. He picks up the win using a leg drop with a chair, but there's no disqualification. Um. It's because it's Sabu. Yeah. 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 And we get a post-match brawl between uh, Sabu, Raven, and Jeff Jarrett and Rhino, obviously leading up to their match at Sacrifice. Very short and snappy episode. Sacrifice. And a very short and snappy episode of uh, Impact Wrestling. But some big things happening that have some big ramifications heading towards Sacrifice. Monty Brown is just a guy, man. He's just a guy. Love Remember, Monty Brown. Stern Getty is about to get a whole lot more dangerous. Yes, it is. But that is a lovely little roundup of the show. Nice and snappy. Nice and short because... Uh, well, these shows are pretty short, which is which is handy. Before we do go, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I forgot the other social media. They're at TW and Wrestle. Subscribe to this wonderful YouTube channel and also subscribe to us on Twitch. You've got the YouTube channel, which if you're not watching on the YouTube, you're listening to us instead, is The Wrestling Movement. And if you don't follow us on Twitch, it's TWM Wrestle. Come over. Also subscribe to us on all your plat- podcast platforms. There's Podbean, YouTube, ACOS. All of them, I just Spotify. I just forget them all now because I don't have them written down anymore. Um, yeah. But anywhere you get podcasts from, we're on there. We're going to be there, so you can subscribe. If you don't want to look at us, you can listen to us instead. Um, but I, 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 I don't want to look at myself half the time. I get it. I don't. Look at me. The purple hair. I'm joking. Um, yeah, but also Wait, subscribe to. What's it? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I can. Oh jeez. That's it was that is definitely a decision that you made during lockdown. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a decision I made when my hair was a like so my hair is like here now, but in terms of fluffiness, it was like up here, mm. and it's when I made a decision, and then it just kept growing, kept getting longer, and I had like a fringe down to just the top of the bridge of my nose. It was just half purple, half natural. Yeah, it wasn't a look. Uh, head over to Twitter and um, watch over there following us. Follow We Love Sport UK. Follow 13 Ten Apparel. Go onto the web browsers and go onto their websites, 13 apparelbigcartelcom Use the code TWM25 to get 25% off your order. And at some point, like my Steam oh, colleague... Oh, don't forget WeLoveSport.co, which still doesn't sound like a website. Yeah, it is, a, it is a real website, I promise. I've been on it. Um, 
yeah, but like my esteemed colleague did say that they'll be having another, hopefully, bit more of a discounted sale because the one we had this weekend was free shipping, which is always very handy to have on a clothing website because sometimes it can be expensive. So that's We Love Sport uh, UK on Twitter, We Love Sport.co on the internet, We Love what? Sport on the App Store, 1310 Apparel on Twitter, 1310.bigcartel.com. That is 13 as the word, 10 as the number. And it's very, very nice and easy to remember. You can follow my esteemed colleague on Twitter at... Um, at McIver the Mark. And you can follow me on Twitter at George underscore Jill underscore. But until next time, guys, see you later. Bye.